Hey everybody, it's Fiesta Friday. So I'm gonna um, actually show you guys how to make um, banana bread from scratch, just like you would in your oven, but we're gonna make it for in three, anywhere between three and four minutes in the microwave in our amazing breakfast maker. So um, there, a lot of these products you've seen already, today we're gonna really focus on our breakfast maker because it does so much more than breakfast. And we're also gonna focus on our modular mates because they keep everything fresher longer and they solve all those bug problems in your pantry and if you live in the mountains like i do any rodents that you might get these keep you safe away from all of those so um to start off with the breakfast maker so this is probably one of um the most used products in our kitchen because you can make omelets in um it's it's one minute per egg. So however many eggs you have in your omelet, you don't want to do more than three eggs really because it just gets a little bit too much in the container. Um, but I usually do two eggs and then I chop up any kind of vegetables or meats that we want in our omelet, pop it in the microwave for 90 seconds to two minutes, take it out, add your cheese on the top, put the, the lid back on, and then it will just melt the cheese just naturally from the steam that's in there. You don't have to put it back in. And it's perfect for two people. So you actually just cut it right in half. You each have one, or you can eat the whole thing for yourself if you're looking to add a lot of protein into your diet. It also comes with these awesome little cups that are actually um, so that you can make poached eggs in the microwave. So poached eggs are pretty tricky to make, like um, in general, but in here they're a piece of cake, super easy. And um, this piece, when you purchase it, it actually comes with um, how to how to make your poached eggs. So what's really cool about our breakfast maker is, yes, it's called the breakfast maker, but that is not the only thing you can do in here. You can actually make a personal, this is pretty big, but a brownie in here. And it's so delicious, and it's done in like two minutes, and it's, oh my gosh, I just can't even tell you. So when you don't want to wait forever for the, for the oven to cook your brownies, you can make a small one and not feel like you have a huge pan um, in your kitchen that you're just going to keep eating. So if you just need that quick sweet tooth, this is perfect. You can also do blueberry muffin um, in here. You can also do um, oatmeal, French toast, bread pudding. Um, we're going to make banana bread. Um, you can also kind of steam um, your vegetables a little bit in here, you know, some thin vegetables. And um, anyways, it's probably one of my favorites because I can use it for so many different things, not just for breakfast. We can use it all day long, dessert breakfast, lunch, dinner, all of the above. So to start, we're going to chop up um, some walnuts in here. Now, you don't have to do nuts, especially if, you know, there's an allergy in your home. Um, you don't need to do nuts, but we're going to do half a cup, um, and I'm just going to kind of pour in here. Um, so this is the baby, okay? So you've seen the big daddy, okay? And this is the little brother, okay? So this is um, our chop and prep. It's probably one of my favorites because it fits right in my cupboard. It's super easy. And if I just need to chop one or two things, this is perfect for that. Okay. So I love that I can um, just pull this out of my cupboard. I can chop up just a couple cloves of garlic. Maybe I'm just doing some herbs or something like that. And those are kind of annoying to chop on your cutting board. I can just chop them right in here. It's super, super simple. Um, so we're going to chop some nuts in here. And I'm just going to throw some in. Um, but you're going to do about half a cup, so I'm going to just do like two smaller handfuls. And this is the best part. We call it the lawnmower at our house, um, but I actually love this also. I have a baby, so I love this for um, on-the-go baby food. So I actually just drop this. I keep one in my diaper bag so that when I go to a restaurant or out to somebody's house for dinner um, where we're not eating in our home, or even when we are eating in our home, I use this. So I just take whatever I've made for dinner and I just throw it all in here and chop it up and baby eats it. And it's like, um, it's not like totally pureed baby food. You can make totally pureed baby food in here when they're doing that. But when they're kind of transitioning from baby food to more solid finger food, this is the best to help you with that. So you, it has a non-skid on the bottom. So if you're doing something hard, like even rock carrots, um, Nuts can be hard if you're doing like peanuts or something like that. Walnuts aren't too hard, um, but if you are doing something hard, you can actually set it on the counter and it has a little non-stick, uh, non-skid on the bottom so that when you hold on and you pull, it's not going to slide all over your countertop. So we call it the lawnmower if you can tell why. So I'm just going to chop these nuts right up from here. And the nuts are actually going to line the bottom of our, um, do a little bit more, I missed one. So one thing I do is I'll Hold a couple times, 
shake and they can move all around and then pull it again. So this blade is very similar to the blade in here. It's shaped a little bit differently. Um, it also comes with a blade guard so that you can keep it um, nice and sharp, but also um, safe away from, from your fingers or from little fingers in your home. And um, it gets sharper the more you use it because it never hits the cutting board. It's only chopping food. So you never want to use, there's two things you don't want to do. One, I always wash the blade by hand. It will stay so nice and sharp if you always wash it by hand. The other thing that I recommend is never using ice. So if you're going to use anything kind of frozen in here, it needs to be frozen fruit or vegetables, not ice, because ice will ding the blade and it will actually wear it down over time. So we're just going to dump these walnuts right in the bottom here. Okay, just like this. So it's just going to line the bottom of our um, breakfast maker. And so now we're going to actually get into putting the ingredients into our Power Chef. So if I wasn't talking, this would take literally minutes to mix up, less than, you know, three minutes to mix up, and then three minutes to cook in the microwave, which is really cool. So this is our Power Chef, and we've seen it in past episodes, but we're going to talk about it again just really briefly. So if anybody's new on here today, you can learn about our amazing Power Chef. So what's really cool about our Power Chef is it can be purchased by itself if you just want the Big Daddy, or if you want to have a little brother with it, you can purchase them together and you actually get a really great discount. So this is $69 regularly, and when you add in the little, the little brother, it's only $79. So it's only 10 bucks more and you get both and you get versatility of having a smaller container and a larger container to do all of your um, chopping and prep needs in your home. So we have the pepper. Last week we used this to mix up our salad dressing for our coleslaw. So make sure you go back and watch last week's episode because this is probably one of my favorite features of this is I can mix up pancake batter, cake batter, you know, all of the above. We're going to use the chopper today because we're going to actually be chopping up some banana into our ingredients. So that's why we're not um, going to use it today, even though we're making a batter. And then we have the blade, which I've talked about this before, but this is an emulsifying blade. So it's going to chop, mix, whip, puree, whatever you put in here. And it's the same system where you pull the string, okay? So if you need to... Um, if you, you share the, the string, the string piece, I'm sorry, the string piece, you share it between the two if you have the big, if you have the daddy and the little brother, okay? Um, but this is the same type of idea. You want to wash the blade by hand. You want to not use it in the dishwasher. Don't use ice if you're going to do smoothies because this makes such yummy fruit smoothies. I love it. We use some um, some juice maybe or milk if you want to use milk, any kind of, some kind of liquid, whatever you prefer. You can even use water. Um, frozen fruit. Um, some yogurt, um, and then you just mix, you just chop it up. And even if you wanted to do, add some green to your smoothie, you, what I do is I'll blanch my spinach. You know, blanch, we could do that in another episode, but basically you boil water, dump your spinach in there and pull it right back out. And so it just kind of softens it just a little bit. So it will actually puree a little bit better in here. Um, it's, this is not a Vitamix, okay, but it does a really great job for a simple smoothie, and it's not loud, and it's not heavy, so it's awesome. It also has the non-skid on the bottom, okay? So we're going to get started with making our banana bread. So you're going to use one ripe banana. I have quite a few today, so I'm sure I'm going to be making more than one batch of banana bread. And because it takes, it takes minutes, I'm going to have multiple banana breads done in less time than I could do it in my oven because banana bread cooks forever in the oven. Um, so we're going to chop up our banana really quick, and then we'll add in the remaining ingredients and chop it all up together. Okay, so one banana, and then we're going to do a third cup of sugar, okay? A quarter cup of flour, or a half cup of flour. Oops, I got it in the hole there. Um, and then we're going to do three tablespoons of some... Um, Sour cream. If you want to use um, Greek yogurt, you could use Greek yogurt. Um, you know, whatever substitutes you prefer, you could use in here. Okay, so three tablespoons. That was a little bit big. <laughs> We're going to do one egg. There we go. Let me grab a paper towel. Okay, and then we're going to do. Um, half a teaspoon of baking soda. Okay, 
So we're going to talk about this baking soda in a second and why you want to store your baking soda in a modular mate and not just in the box that it comes in from the grocery store. And then we also, it calls for a pinch of salt. And just so you know, a pinch of salt is always an eighth teaspoon. And what's really cool about our um, measuring spoons is that we have, um, you know, not as common measurements like an eighth teaspoon, a half a tablespoon. Um, and what's really cool if you notice is we don't have the ring. Okay, so because that's the first thing we lose, right? The first thing that goes out the door and is lost is the ring, and then none of our measuring spoons stay together anymore. These just snap together super easy. They also lay flat. You can see that up here. They lay flat, so I can pre measure like I'm on the cooking show, okay? And, and then I can just dump when I'm ready to put it all in. So it's super simple. Um, our measurements are also embossed, and that goes for our measuring cups as well on there, so they're never gonna wear off over time. And that's really great because um, then you're not guessing. You'll always know what your measurements are no matter how long you've had them. Um, while we're talking about measuring cups and measuring spoons, what's really cool about our measuring cups is that they are ergonomic, so they hold well in your hand. They're also right and left hand friendly because they have a pore spout on both sides of the measuring cup, if you can see that has that little pore spout here and here. So no matter what hand you use, you're going to be comfortable with our measuring, spoon, uh, measuring cups and spoons. Okay, and then we're also going to put half a cup of milk in here. There we go. All right. And then we're just going to mix it all together. And then we're going to dump it in here and put it in the microwave for three minutes. I'm just going to give it a little shake to make sure we get everything combined. Oops. And then I'm going to show you a quick trick on this, okay? So a lot of times people are like, well, I probably shouldn't put this in the dishwasher, right? This strain. So I'm going to show you a trick on how to get this off. If you have one of these or if you're thinking of purchasing one, this is how you want to clean this part, okay? So there's a little slit right there. You just put in a butter knife or maybe the end of a spoon. You put it right in there and you just kind of, whoops, twist, ooh, but hold on to it. And then it separates. So this is the part that gets dirty, really. So I always put this. You can put this in the dishwasher. You can wash it by hand, however you'd like. And then I just kind of wipe this out with a paper towel um, or a tape or a or a kitchen towel, whatever you use, just because it will get kind of dusty, but it's not dirty. So you don't need to wash that part necessarily. But you can pop this in your dishwasher. So that's just a little tip on how to do that. And here's our delicious banana bread batter. We'll grab our spatula. Okay, spatulas. If you don't have one you love, you need a Tupperware one. So this one will actually, you can actually cook with it on the stovetop up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can make everything you make on your stove with your nonstick pans and not scratch them with our silicone spatula. Oops, let's just fix those nuts. Okay. And then you just pour this right over top. Ooh. And then I'm going to throw in a quarter cup of chocolate chips, and you just kind of let them sink in. And you don't have to do chocolate chips. This is just an addition that I'm adding, and you can add whatever you like to your banana bread. I'm going to go pop this in my microwave for three to four minutes. I'm going to do four. This is pretty big. And the rule of thumb is if you cook it in your oven without a lid, then you cook it in your microwave without a lid. So I'm not going to actually put this on because it was pretty close, you can see, um, to the very edge. Um, so, But when you cook your omelets and things like that, you want to keep the, the lid on. It will keep the steam in and cook it. With this, it should be okay because that's just how we cook it in the, in the, um, in the oven as well. So another cool thing about our spatula, and it's kind of dirty right now, so it's going to be hard for me to... Um, show you but you can actually remove the base from the bottom okay so mine needs to be clean as you can see so what's really cool is I can separate it and then I can clean it right and I don't have to and it goes back on just as tight as it was before 
So it's really easy to clean, really easy to take care of. Um, and all of our products carry a lifetime warranty. Now some are a little bit different, but the majority of our products carry a lifetime warranty. So you only have to buy it once and you never have to buy it again, which is awesome. So one time and then you don't buy it again. So we consider it to wear an investment. And I have my children in the background, if you can hear them. They are having fun. And I'm going to show you um, our modular mates really quickly because these probably are my favorites that Tupperware carries. It creates the most perfect, ideal kitchen that you might be looking to have in your pantry, in your cupboards, whatever space you use to um, store all your kitchen ingredients, basically, right? So the basics, the flour, the sugar, the brown sugar, the powdered sugar, the... Um, baking soda, um, salt, okay, chocolate chips, anything that I keep for an extended amount of time, I store in modular mates. Cereal, chips, all of the above. So I'm gonna think you think for one second. Think about your pantry. Sometimes it can be kind of scary, right? So I'm gonna think about your pantry. And how many times do we get into our pantry and we find three bags of the same chips all opened, all stale? Okay, say me because we've all experienced it, right? And then we go to the store, or have you ever done this, where you think, oh, I'm not sure if I have that. I'll just buy a couple boxes while I'm at the grocery store. And then you come home, and you look in your pantry, and you find three boxes of what you just bought. Has that ever happened to you before? So modular mates really help you um, use the food that you have, see it visually in your pantry or in your cupboard so that you're not buying more than you need, but also so that um, you're using what you buy and not and it's not going bad. So baking soda. I'm gonna go into baking soda. So why do we buy baking soda? How many of you buy baking soda to get rid of smells in your fridge or your freezer? I do. Yes? I think we all do, right? Now we also use baking soda to do what? Make cookies, bake bread, you know, we, we need it in all of our baking needs. We need baking soda. But baking soda, if not stored properly, takes on all the scents and flavors um, and odors of things that are surrounding it. So think about where you store your baking soda maybe for a second and think about maybe some of the smells and odors and, um, and things that maybe come through that area where you store it. If it's not in an airtight container, then it is absorbing whatever is surrounding it. So then, number one, your baking soda is not as potent, so it doesn't work as well when you're baking. And number two, just think about it. It's absorbed those things that ooh, are yucky, right? You know, any smell that you maybe have in your kitchen or in your house absorb into your um, baking soda if it's not stored properly. So this is why I love our modular mates because I know my baking soda. I can buy it in huge quantities at Costco and then I can store it in here and it stays fresh for however long it takes me to use it because it's stored properly. Okay, we have multiple sizes of these. Okay, so you can see this is the super oval. It's a long oval. We have a rectangle. Okay, this is probably my, these are my two favorites. We also carry a square that if you can imagine, it's a square, okay? And then we also carry an oval, which is just a smaller, a little bit smaller than our super oval, okay? So um, what I love about these is they use the space because I love the rectangles because I have a deep pantry. But if you don't have a deep pantry, then you're gonna wanna use squares and ovals. And you ask yourself two questions. Do I like to scoop or do I like to pour? And it depends on what I have in the container, right? So I typically like to scoop my flour, my sugar, my oatmeal, all those things. So I'm going to use rectangles and squares. If I like to pour or if I'm going to use measuring spoons, it's something small like salt, then I'm going to um, use ovals and super ovals. Super simple. And then it's super simple math. It's really cool. So they're all numbered one, two, three, four, and then we do have a five in our super oval size. Okay. So and it's just it's simple math. So if your pantry can fit, let's see, this is a three. This would be four high. Okay. So three plus one is four. Now I know what I can fit, how high and how wide. And what's really great is in our catalog we actually have measurements. So that you could actually um, measure your pantry and see, you know, how deep can I go, what size could I use, and how high can I go in my pantry as well. And that's an, uh, a free um, 
consultation that I offer as well. So if you're looking to um, organize your pantry and all of those ingredients that you have maybe just scattered throughout your pantry like the majority of people, um, I offer a free consultation where I can do it virtually or I can do it in your home and we can measure and map out your pantry or your cupboards, whatever space you use to create the perfect pantry and your most ideal kitchen for you. So let's check on that banana bread. Be right back. looks perfect. Okay, I'm just going to grab a plate. Now, you could actually just slice it and eat it right out of here. Isn't that delicious? Banana bread, right? In four minutes and not 45 to an hour in your oven. So I'm just going to cut a little slice out of here and show you what it looks like. Oh my gosh, you guys, this looks so good. And then if you dump it, oops, it's got the nuts on the top, had a little bit of chocolate in there. If you wanted to mix the chocolate more into it, then you would have, mine's kind of all on the top because I just laid it on the top. It baked a little bit down, but not much. So if you wanted it to be more incorporated, you could mix it in before you dump your batter in whatever you prefer. And this is a really delicious way, an easy, quick way to make a banana bread, right? So um, right before I let you all go, I just wanted to share with you that this amazing Power Chef and this amazing breakfast maker, if you were to purchase them with, um, together, it would be 69 plus 29, okay? So almost uh, like $100, okay? You could get our amazing kitchen starter pack, and you um, actually can see that on our page below, um, more information on that, but you can actually get our starter pack for $99, and you get so much more than just these two things. You'll actually get a knife, you'll get measuring cups and spoons, which you saw today, you'll see, you'll get our um, spatula, you'll get this beautiful set of bowls, you get one piece of our awesome modular mates that we talked about today, and um, so you get a really great kind of starter pack, and then we help you um, add the rest of those products to your kitchen that you really want at a discount or even for free sometimes. So um, if that's something that you're interested in, just let me know or let the person know that shared this um, demonstration with you and we can help you start creating your ideal kitchen. I'll see you guys next week on Fiesta Friday. Bye.